Hello, good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well. So in today's class, we're going to discuss about object diagram. So object diagram is a diagram in UML that is capable of highlighting instances of classes uh, that are included in the in the class diagram. That is, it is capable of representing objects that objects of the classes that are participating in the class diagram. So uh, a object diagram is a diagram that represents set set of objects and their relationships. At a particular point in time so in order to realize a particular scenario what we require is we require a set of objects to interact with each other so an object uh, a diagram is a diagram that represents a set of objects and the relationships that are established in between them in a given point in time now uh, in a very simple term object diagram is a diagram that tries to uh, represent uh, the set of objects and the the links that allows the objects to interact with each other now, this implies that object diagram can be used for visualizing, uh, specifying, constructing, documenting uh, the existence of certain instances or instances in a system together with the relationship. So it is used basically for uh, visualizing, specifying, constructing and uh, documenting the existence of various instances in the class right, uh, together with their relationship. Now let us try to understand various steps that are involved in um, creation of a object diagram. So in order to create object diagram, we need to follow uh, the, the specified steps. So the first step is to identify all the functionalities that may be of interest uh, that may be of interest that results from interaction of classes and interfaces. So that is the first activity we, that we need to do. So we need to identify all the functions or behaviors that may be of interest, which may be produced as a result of, um, of classes and interactions. Now, once the, the set of functions are identified, then for each identified uh, function or behavior, uh, what we need to do is we need to identify the set of uh, collaborating objects and the relationship between them because eventually whenever a behavior or a function will be realized, it will be realized with the help of a uh, uh, set of uh, collaborating objects and the relationship between them. Now. The third step that we are going to execute is consider any one of the scenario that involves um, that that uh, that, in, that invokes the the function or the behavior taken into consideration. So uh, what we need to do is we need to consider a scenario which invokes the function or behavior that is under consideration. Then what we need to do is we need to freeze the scenario and render the participating objects because every time that particular scenario will be executed, what we have is we say have same set of objects interacting with each other in order to realize the. Behavior. Behavior. Now, then, once the, the set of functions have been identified, uh, once uh, the collaborating objects for each of the functions have been identified, uh, and uh, and subsequently uh, uh, the scenario has been uh, freezed and uh, the objects have been rendered, then what we need to do is now we need to work with the internal uh, state of the object. So uh, what we need to do is we need to identify the values of the state variables put into a given object because uh, the values of the state variables will better explain the uh, the the, uh, the the scenario. So that is that is the reason why what we need to do is we need to identify the values of the state variables put into a given object. So once the state variables are the values of the state variables are identified put into different state, what we need to do is we need to expose the links among the uh, the various objects. So these are the steps that are involved in creation of uh, an object diagram. So first what we need to do is we need to identify the, the functions or behaviors uh, that may be of interest which may be produced as a result of uh, collaboration uh, of classes and, in, uh, and interfaces. Then once the set of functions have, have been identified, for each function what we need to do is we need to identify the set of collaborating objects along with their relationships Right? And uh, uh, once the set of uh, collaborating objects have been identified, then what we need to do is we need to consider a scenario uh, where that particular function is invoked. Uh, what we need to do is we need to freeze the scenario and render the participating objects. Uh, now, once the, the, uh, the scenario has been uh, freezed, what we need to do is we need to identify all possible values that the state variable of a particular object may attain during the execution of the scenario because it helps in better understanding the scenario and then what we need to do is we need to expose the link among the various objects so in this class till now what we have learned is we have learned about what is an object diagram so we have learned that object diagram is a diagram that is capable of uh, modeling the instances of classes that are participating in the class diagram and it shows the set of objects and their relationship at a given point in time now it is a simple diagram that is capable of representing objects and the links that are there 
and object diagram uh, we have learned about the usage of object diagram so it's used for visualizing specifying uh, constructing and documenting and the instances of the classes that are participating in realization of the system along with their relationship then we have learned about steps uh, in the creation of object diagram so we need to identify the uh, the set of functionalities first then once the set of functionalities are identified we need to identify for each functionality we need to identify the collaborating objects and the relationship so once the collaborating objects uh, for a given uh, function has been identified then we need to identify a scenario where the function is invoked and then uh, we need to freeze the scenario and uh, render the participating objects because we know that, that every time whenever the scenario will be executed same set of objects will be um, invoked or same set of objects will be participating and then eventually what we need to do is we need to find out all possible values that the state variable pertaining to an object may attain right and uh, then expose the link among these objects so now what we can what uh, what you can do is you can take up an example and draw an object diagram uh, for the same uh, uh, so this is an assignment for you so you need to submit it right so now let us try to move on to a behavioral diagram so behavioral diagram is a diagram that represents how the the, the object behaves whenever they are put to work uh, given uh, give, uh, given a, a suitable structure to the system so now just see so behavioral diagrams diagram that uh, represents the way how the object behaves when the object is put to work using the structure already defined in the, the structure diagram that is an example class diagram so in the class diagram what we have already done is we have already uh, defined the way how the objects are really uh, the, ob uh, the the classes are related to each other and the object diagram we have already determined the way how the objects are related to each other so behavioral diagrams basically diagram that is capable of representing the way how objects behave uh, when they are put to work using the structure already defined in the structural diagram. So it models how the objects communicate with each other in order to attain a desired objective so or in order to accomplish a given task. So that is that is the uh, that is the characteristics that uh, that is exhibited in case of be, uh, behavioral diagram. So it is a diagram. Uh, uh, again, I'll repeat it. So it's a diagram that is capable of uh, representing the way how the objects behave whenever the objects are put to work. But here, what we need to take into consideration is we need to take into consideration that it has to do it within the defined structure that is provided in the structural diagram. Uh, it models how the object communicates with one another. Uh, to accomplish the task within within the within uh, within the operation of the system. Now, uh, a behavioral diagram uh, describes how the system responds to the action of the user, uh, how it maintains the internal integrity, how it moves data, and how it creates manipulate creates and manipulate objects. So, these are very important points that you need to remember. So, a behavioral diagram is a diagram that is capable of describing how the objects are, um, uh, the, uh, how the how the system responds to the uh, call of the user or action of the user. It describes how the internal integrity is maintained by the the various uh, objects that are participating uh, in the realization of the business how the data movement takes place and how uh, the objects are created and manipulated that basically means behavioral diagram is a diagram that uh, describes a discrete chunk of behavior of a system right so now that discrete chunk of behavior of system is called as a scenario so a scenario may be defined as a particular way in which a system can be used by the user and a system can be perceived as a collection of scenarios. Now let us try to define a, uh, uh, the term scenario. Now scenario is a textual description of uh, of how a system behaves under a uh, uh, under a given uh, set of circumstances or under a specific set of circumstances. So scenario is a textual description about the way how the system behaves whenever they are put into certain set of circumstances. That is a way uh, in which a system behaves whenever uh, a request comes from the external user. Now, uh, in order to understand scenario, what we can do is we can correlate scenario with use cases. So, behavioral described in use cases is the basis for scenario. So, each and every use case that is there in use case diagram can be thought of as a scenario. So, if you consider an ATM machine, so uh, withdrawing cash is a scenario, printing mini statement is a scenario, uh, changing PIN code is a scenario, um, uh, uh, transferring uh, fund to some other account is a scenario. So, you see, so an ATM machine can be perceived as a collection of scenario where using a scenario we can perform a, a, a purpose specific task uh, using the system so scenario can uh, not only provide the basis for development but it also helps in development of test cases and uh, and eventually testing as well now 
Sequence diagram is one of the interaction diagrams that we will go through uh, uh, in this particular class. So sequence diagram is the diagram that shows interaction between uh, various objects that takes the uh, interaction between various objects uh, in order to realize uh, a particular um, uh, in order to realize a particular objective. So sequence diagram is a diagram uh, that uh, that represents interaction that takes place between various objects uh, in order to realize a, a given objective or here we can call it as a scenario. So uh, sequence diagram is a diagram that re represents all possible objects that are participating in the realization of a particular business process or a particular scenario. So uh, there are various components of sequence diagram. So the components are uh, object lifeline and messages. Right? Right? So object lifeline basically refers to the span of time for which the object will be participating in the realization of the uh, the realization of the scenario. So it has object in it and it has a timeline. Now timeline is a line uh, that runs from the uh, uh, beginning of the uh, diagram that is from the top to the uh, end of the diagram that is to the bottom. So uh, it's a, it's a line that runs uh, and that runs. Uh, from the beginning of the diagram to the end of the diagram uh, which represents uh, the time for which the object will uh, will be present or participating in the scenario so uh, in the realization of the scenario so during this time an object may be active object or it may be in a, it may be in active mode or it may be in passive mode so object lifeline is is, is the is, is the time span of the object uh, for the execution of scenario where what we have is we have object and we have timeline and uh, now messages messages can be it can be message or stimulus or it can be signals exceptions it can be operations returns or it can be identification now let us try to discuss about timeline so as I've said timeline uh, is a line that runs from beginning of the scenario at the top of the diagram to the end of the scenario at the bottom of the diagram so it begins from the top of the diagram and ends at the bottom of the diagram that means a timeline is a line that is associated with the object that runs across the uh, that runs across the scenario. So during the uh, timeline, the object may be in active state or it may be in passive state. Right. Now uh, let us th talk about what is message, right? Okay. So a message is a description of some type of communication between objects. So whenever we talk about message, message is nothing but a communication uh, uh, that established between the sender and the receiving object. So it's a unit of communication between objects. So sender object may invoke an operation, raise a signal, cause uh, the creation or destruction of the the target object. Now the way how the message is represented, message is represented with the help of, uh, with the help of a directed arrow directed from the sender to the receiver from the sender to the receiver and the head will be pointing towards the receiver so that is the way how the message is being represented so it's represented with the help of a directed arrow as with the associated message directed from sender to the receiver so now let us try to take an example let us try to understand the way how sequence diagram is built so this is a very simple sequence diagram that i've taken from one of the refer web references uh, that tries to uh, represent a scenario of a uh, railway reservation so, using the scenario, uh, a passenger is capable of uh, uh, reserving a ticket uh, uh, reserving a ticket using the railway reservation system. So, here what we have is we have passenger, train, railway administrator, printer, ticket, database and bank. So, these are the objects that are participating in the realization of the scenario because uh, these objects will be, um, uh, will, be, will be performing some defined role whenever, whenever the scenario will be realized. So, here what we have is we have the objects passenger train railway administrator printer ticket database and bank so here in some of the representation you may find a name uh, a colon associated with the name and the name may be in title case right okay uh, not in uppercase made in title so it basically represents objects so so this is the way how uh, objects are represented in in different notations so in different sequence diagrams you may find the different ways of representing the objects so now here what we have is uh, we have the passenger interacting with the system railway reservation system in order to uh, uh, in order to book a ticket right so first message uh, the is just see now along the timeline what we have is we have a uh, we have a, a bar representing the activation time so here a bar basically represents the activation time so this is the point in time when the when the uh, the objects will be actually 
active right so based on that uh, what we can do is we can also categorize object into uh, 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 active object and passive object so active objects are one who initiates the interaction and passive objects are one who responds to the uh, response to the request that are sent by uh, some other object so here uh, the bar along the timeline so this is the timeline so if you see the dotted line these are nothing but timelines so along the timeline what we have is we have we have the activation time being represented by a solid bar so here now what uh, the passive Passenger does. Passenger will request for uh, login to the ra railway administrator. So railway administrator is one who is capable of managing the account. So the administrator, the passenger will try to log in into the uh, railway reservation system, right? Now once uh, the passenger is capable of logging in, the passenger will take uh, check for the availability of the train, right? Okay. So. Once the uh, once the passenger finds that the the uh, the train is so the uh, the object train will give the the availability of the train. So if available, then what uh, the passenger will do? Passenger will request reservation form. The railway administrator will uh, respond with the uh, with the reservation uh, reservation form, and then uh, the passenger will fill and submit the form. The railway administrator will update the uh, user details in the database. Then. Uh, the passenger will request for uh, debiting the amount right again okay? and the bank will debit the amount from the account of the passenger right and give back the details so uh, deb debit uh, ticket fare here so once the ticket fare has been debited right so uh, um, up, what we need to do is we need to update the reservation details for the passenger right now once the uh, the uh, the reservation detail has been updated for a particular passenger then what we need to do is we need to uh, request for printing of the ticket right okay so the, the railway administrator will request for the printing of the ticket so from the database the details will be extracted okay from the database the uh, the uh, details will be extracted uh, the uh, the uh, the user will take into account the ticket that is being generated and then uh, the the printing of the ticket is performed okay once the uh, ticket is printed, the ticket is issued to the user, right? Now, uh, it may so happen that the user may request for cancellation. So, uh, the user will send a re cancellation request, request to the admin. The admin will send respond back to the user, right? Again, okay. uh, the admin will update the database of the user, right? Okay. Again, and uh, the um, the admin will communicate cancellation details to the, to the user, right? Likewise, uh, uh, the the cancellation detail will also be updated right so uh, into the database and uh, uh, what we need to do is we need to update the uh, update any uh, new train detail that may be there uh, that, that may be there uh, between a given route so now to see this is a very simple sequence diagram that tries to show the sequence of interaction so let us discuss it again so first what will happen first the passenger will uh, log into the system uh, the passenger will check for availability if available uh, the respond will be given to the passenger then the passenger will request for the reservation form uh, the admin will form uh, provide the reservation form uh, the passenger will fill the uh, reservation form and provide it to the admin the uh, the railway administrator will update the database right so when the database is updated the 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 passenger will request for uh, debiting the amount from the bank account of the uh, the and the user then uh, once the amount has been debited the details will be given to the uh, to the passenger right and uh, here what we will have what will happen is uh, the the reservation details will be updated because now the client has paid for the fare now once the client has paid for the fare then railway administrator will uh, request for the uh, request for the ticket pertaining to the uh, pertaining to the reservation that the customer has made so once the uh, the uh, ticket is been drawn then a passenger will request for the printing of the ticket the printing will be performed the ticket will be printed and it will be provided to the customer right or to the passenger so at point in time passenger may request for cancellation so the cancellation uh, uh, here the 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 admin will provide the can uh, the reservation detail right okay so once the admin provides the reservation detail so it will uh, perform cancellation uh, the ticket will be cancelled right the database will be updated and if, if there is any new train that is there the database for the train will be updated so this is the way how sequence uh, diagram is being built so all of you just go through the sequence diagram once so it is very easy to interpret but here what we need to do is we need to understand that in order to realize a given scenario there are a set of objects that are participating in realization of the scenario uh, 
uh, this uh, with each of the objects we have a timeline associated so timeline runs from the beginning of the scenario that is from the top of the diagram uh, to the end of the scenario that is bottom of the diagram right so during the timeline object may be in active state or passive state so uh, we can also distinguish object uh, as passive object and active object so uh, active objects are one who will be initiating the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, initiating the entire process of executing the scenario so here passenger uh, is a active object whereas all the other objects are um, uh, passive objects that are participating in realization of the scenario right so this is a very simple diagram that tries to represent the sequence of interaction that takes place between various objects uh, for realizing a scenario that is reservation of ticket using railway reservation system so in today's class what we have learned about is we have learned about uh, what is an object diagram uh, we have learned about uh, what are the, what are the uses of object diagram. We have learned about the ways for creating object diagram. So you have an assignment that you have to execute where you have to draw an object diagram for any uh, for any system that you have taken into consideration. And then we have talked about behavioral diagram. We have talked about the importance of behavioral diagram. We have talked about what behavioral diagram basically tries to describe. Okay, and uh, we have talked about. Uh, scenario the, uh, the, the we have talked about uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the definition of the scenario and how scenarios can be interpreted for a given system then we talked about sequence diagram where we uh, uh, where we learned that sequence diagram is sequence uh, is a diagram that rep represents the uh, the sequence of interaction that takes place between object whenever a scenario is to be realized then we learned about the components of the sequence diagram where what we have is we have timeline and we have messages right again okay? now we we have learned about what is the timeline and we have learned about what is a message right we have learned about the way how the message is represented and uh, we have learned we have learned about sequence diagram taking into consideration a scenario of reserving ticket using railway reservation system right and we have identified the various objects and drawn the sequence diagram for this thing so thank you very much have a very good day